What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm looking at trading for tomorrow and the rest of this week. So the stock market is closed today due to the passing of George H.W. Bush. So the government pretty much closed the stock market in honor of him. So rest in peace to George H.W. Bush. And you know, I'm taking today really to plan my trades for tomorrow and the rest of this week and heading into next week. So for those of you guys that are new to my channel, my name is Stas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be in contact with me and about 315 other investors and traders, join that Discord group chat, guys. We're talking about trading, investing, stocks, stock news, strategies, and just working together, networking with each other, helping each other become the best possible traders and investors possible, right? So again, all of those are linked down below in the description box and I would love to communicate and further talk to you guys on all of those different social platforms. So you know, I did some research today. I did some, uh, you know, I, I I planned my watch list and I really wanted to share a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching this week. And drop a comment down below, you know, let me know what you guys are planning to trade tomorrow, Friday, heading into the next week. I really, really would love to know and talk to you guys about that. So, you know, before I do hop into my watch list that I do have here, you know, again, for those of you guys that, you know, have been following me for a while, I do trade a bunch of similar stocks and ETFs, you know, pretty much every day throughout my whole entire trading career. I usually just stick to a couple that I really understand, a couple that, you know, I'm hopping in and out of all the time and that work for me personally. But before we do get into that, um, let's just talk about what's going on in the overall market in terms of these technicals uh, in the Dow Jones, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. So yesterday was a terrible day in the markets. The Dow Jones was down about 800 points at one point. You know, we got that a glimpse of good news from Trump and uh, the president of China halting the tariffs for 90 days, keeping them at 10%. So we got a glimpse of good news Monday, solid day in the stock market. The Dow was up 500 points pre-market hours. You know, the S&P was up about 50, 60, 70 points. I forget the exact number, but it was around that range. You know, the NASDAQ was up about, <clears throat> about 100, 150 points around that range. So Monday. Monday was a very, very solid day. We had a finally, we finally had a glimpse of light in the stock market. But, you know, all of that got crushed yesterday when the Dow got crushed 800 points. S&P was down about 70, 80 points at one point, And uh, the NASDAQ was down about 200 points at one point. So, you know, all those gains that we got on Monday were pretty much erased yesterday and then some, right? We lost even more from what we gained the previous day. So on a technical basis here, guys, in terms of the Dow Jones, let's just take a look at this. So, We've been talking about this horizontal pattern that the Dow Jones has been trading in pretty much over the past couple of weeks, ever since this bad, bad October that we had in the market. So we peaked here, you know, at, in the beginning of October at about 27K in the Dow Jones. We sold off all the way to about 24,500 at the end of October. And from there, guys, that was a new support that was formed. From here, we bounced up. Peaked out at about 26,200, sold off again to about 24,500, bounced on that same support level, and now we shot up and we got rejected by this 180 day simple moving average on this 180 day four hour chart that we're following right here. And what this is telling me, guys, is that the Dow Jones is making lower highs and it's continuing this downwards trending pattern, the downwards trending channel that it's been in. Ever since that bloody start to October that we had about two months ago to the date, you know, we see here October 4th, 
October 5th is when we started to fall off a cliff in the Dow Jones. And from there, the high at 27K, the lower high here at 26.2, the lower high here at about 25.8. And that's just telling us that the Dow Jones is falling. It is going down in price over the past two months. And, you know, if this pattern does continue in the Dow Jones, guys, I wouldn't be surprised if we do break below this uh, support at $24,500 in the next coming days. And obviously, you know, with all of these tensions with China, with the trade wars, the tariffs, I believe this can happen because I do think there's more downside to come in the overall stock market, which again, I am not mad about because I'm a long-term investor as well as a trader, day trader, swing trader. So I'm capitalizing on both ends of the spectrum here, meaning that I'm trading stocks. You know, I'm trading these ETFs that are going up when the markets are going down. You know, I'm trading these other inverse ETFs that are very volatile, and I'm also adding money to my long-term positions as we're selling off in the overall stock market. So this is pretty much a win-win scenario for me. And I know a bunch of other people out there that follow the channel that are in the group, you know, view it the same exact way. So I wouldn't be surprised again, if we do sell off to this level again, and even break below it to continue this lower low, uh, you know, lower high pattern that we've been in, in terms of the Dow Jones. And if we're just looking at the relative strength index right here we're you know we're pretty much in the middle of the spectrum between 70 and 30 and for those of you guys that don't know the relative strength index is a measure of whether or not a stock, an ETF, an index, whatever we're looking at is overbought or oversold. So, you know, if we're up here by the 70 level, that means the index, the stock, the ETF is more on the overbought side, right? Meaning that it could potentially pull back at that point. It could potentially not be as good of a buy at that point as it would be if it was down here. And on the flip side, right, if we're at the 30 level, that means it's more oversold. People are selling, 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 and that might be a better opportunity to hop into that particular stock, ETF, index, whatever you're watching at that moment. So we notice here we're at the 45 level, so we're in the middle. So, you know, there is definitely more downside, especially since it's pointing straight down. And we notice, you know, every time it's been pointing straight down, it's fallen more from that point. So take a look here, guys. When we've topped off at the top of this RSI level and we've pointed straight down, we've ended up shooting down even more. Check this out. You see it here, you see it here. You know, you see it here, it's shot down. So I do believe there's a chance for the Dow Jones to continue to sell off, pushing this RSI level even more to the oversold territory. So in terms of the uh, the Dow, not looking too great in terms of the technicals. I do see some more downside there. So the S&P 500, same exact thing, guys. It's been trading in this horizontal pattern. We got rejected by the 180 simple moving average yesterday. And I've been talking about how, you know, the S&P has to break above the 180 simple moving average at around 22800. And then this uh, next resistance at 2820 before being... Yeah, before uh, uh, potentially testing the highs that we saw back in October. And obviously, guys, with all the tensions, again, that I've been talking about with China, you know, Trump, uh, you know, the tariffs, trade war, this is not looking to, to, uh, to be happening right now until all of these tensions, and all this conflict uh, ends up clearing up. So, you know, we topped off near the top of this resistance, near the top of this uh, horizontal pattern, horizontal channel here. And now we're heading below. Uh, we're breaking below this support level here, uh, you know, at about 27.15, which was a previous support. We broke below that. We broke below the 50 simple moving average. So same thing with the Dow, guys. I, I wouldn't be really surprised at all if the S&P, you know, did sell off to this level here and potentially even down below. But we noticed that the S&P's pattern is not, you know, it's not as, uh, uh, what's, what's the word? It's not as, it's not really showing as much of a downtrend 
as the Dow Jones because like the Dow Jones, we're showing a lower high, uh, you know, higher low pattern here. Lower high, lower high, lower high. But in terms of the uh, S&P, it's more of a horizontal pattern where it's been able to pop up to, to around the same level, not really making lower highs, but really just maintaining this same, you know, 2800 to 2820 uh, resistance point. And, you know, let's say if, if, if this one was able at this moment in time, if this was, uh, you know, if this popped up and topped off here at about 2750, you know, that pattern of lower highs would be, uh, you know, it would apply to the S&P as well. But since we were able to pop up here, you know, and, uh, you know, maintain this resistance level at this point, the S&P is more in a horizontal pattern, in my opinion, from what the charts are telling me than the Dow Jones is. So in terms of the NASDAQ slash NQ, this one is actually the only one that's showing a reversal pattern. And by this, I mean, you know, we're no longer trading under this 180 day simple moving average, which has been a resistance in the past. We know that we see it topped off here, 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 as well as, uh, you know, well, that's actually it. But, you know, we were at we were at a, we were at it here about a couple of days back. We were hovering above it and I was really interested to see, you know, were we able or were we going to be able to break out of that resistance? right which actually ended up happening or were we going to get rejected so pretty much guys we were able to break out of the 180 sma resistance here and now we're holding this uh 50 simple moving average on the 180 day four hour chart in terms of the nasdaq so out of all of the indexes on a technical basis the nasdaq is definitely looking the best in my personal opinion from what i can draw and uh you know what i can conclude from these charts here now let's talk about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for tomorrow and looking to trade for tomorrow, Friday, and heading into the next, uh, you know, heading into next week. So let's just take a look right here, guys. Um, Hershey is at the top of my list due to it in terms of stocks. Hershey's at the top of my list because it's been able to go up in price, although the markets have been getting slaughtered, right? So this is a good sign that Hershey is able to hold through any market corrections. Well, let me rephrase that. Hershey's able to hold through this previous market correction. Obviously, if we see a very, very strong bear market, you know, a very strong correction, Hershey's probably going to get affected, but in terms of this previous little correction the past month or two, Hershey has not been able to get affected. So this gives me some confidence to potentially hold this one swing traded for a couple of days, maybe a week or two. So for those of you guys that have been following my channel, I actually traded Hershey this past week. I got a 1% gain on it. I ended up selling off at the 109 level here, nearing that resistance point, and I've been telling you guys that I want to re-enter Hershey on a pullback. So now that we're seeing it actually pulled back a decent amount yesterday and it's holding above this 50 simple moving average, this could potentially be a good entry point in my personal opinion. If we're able to hold above the 50 simple moving average heading into pre-market hours, into the open market hours, uh, you know, early market hours <clears throat> tomorrow on the 6th of December. So let's say tomorrow, guys, if we open up right around 108.25, let's say 108.50, this one does offer another 1-2% up to previous highs at about 100 ten dollars which it was able to hit yesterday right if we look at the one day one minute Hershey popped up to 110, then it then it pretty much downtrended all the way back to 107. So that little pullback that I wanted to see in Hershey happened yesterday, and I'm very happy about it. But I'm going to be very patient and wait for the opportunity to open up to me because although we are holding above this 50 simple moving average, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if we do break below it and maybe get to around 107, 106, and even maybe back down to the 180 simple moving average, uh, you know, heading into next week. But let's say, you know, there's different scenarios that could potentially play out with this. If we hold above here and start to push up, that's a confirming factor that we're going back up to that next resistance, in my personal opinion. But if we break below here, you know, the next resist or the next support rather is going to be around this. 
this 180 day simple moving average, possibly around 106 to $107. So I'm going to set an alert on Hershey, let's say at about $107. I really want to keep a close eye on this one. I'm going to set two alerts here. Mark is at or above 100. Actually, no. Mark is at or below 107. And then I want to set another alert here at, let's say, 108.50-ish. Let's set that alert too. 108.50. Let's say 108. 108.40, right? Let's say is at or above. So I want two different alerts on this. I want to be alerted on if Hershey's going to break above this 108.40 mark, which means it would bounce above this 50 simple moving average. Or, you know, I want to get an alert if we do break below this and start heading towards the 180 simple moving average because, you know, again, both of these could happen. And I'm interested in trading Hershey in both of these different scenarios. So, that's what I'm looking at in ticker symbol HSY. Um, you know, a, a couple of other ones, obviously, guys, TVIX, TQQQ, and QQQ are ones that I'm going to be watching. I watch these every single day. We trade these in the group all the time. I trade these pretty much all the time. Every single week, I'm in and out of these different ETFs. And for those of you guys that don't know, you know, TVIX is an ETF that goes up in price when the markets are selling off. So this one had a ridiculous day yesterday. I believe it was up like 25% at one point. I personally was not able to catch that move yesterday because it was a very quick move. It was like this when TVIX went up 18% in a matter of 30 minutes. We talked about this in yesterday's video. If I show you very quickly here, again, you can see it from 36 up to this peak, that was literally a two-hour move. And from 36 up to here, which was an 18% move, that was literally in 30 minutes, 45 minutes, you know, this one was able to pop 16%. So I personally was not able to catch that move. But again, a lot of people were. And shout out to you if you were. So in terms of a technical basis here, guys, in terms of this uh, chart, we noticed that TVIX is at a resistance point right here at under the 50 and 180 simple moving averages. So if you do think that the markets are going to continue to sell off, and I personally think so, I think TVIX is going to be a good play tomorrow. But again, we got to wait and see what's happening pre-market hours, what's happening with these futures, right? We could even potentially see uh, you know, we could in the short term, meaning in the next two, three days, we could see some pushback up in the market since we did sell off heavily, which could push this down a little bit. But again, in the next two, three weeks, I still think in a, in a, in a in a longer short term outlook, if that makes any sense, right? Not in the next two, three days, but in two, three weeks, I do think the market's going to continue to sell off. You know, even though we might bounce back up tomorrow and the next day, I still think that downtrend is going to be in play. So, you know, if we are able to pull back a little bit here, if the market does pop up, I think that's going to be a pretty decent entry point if you do believe the market is going to continue to sell off in the next coming weeks. You know, and uh, as well as, uh, you know, the opposite here, right? TQQQ is one on a technical basis that is looking better than TVIX, but this is one that you would trade if you think the markets are going to be going back up in price. So let's just take a look very quickly at the overall markets again. So the Dow Jones, guys, this is looking like a falling knife to me, which is why I do think, you know, in the next two, three weeks, I do think this one's going to continue to push down. But again, we could see a pushback up tomorrow potentially, right? Because again, huge sell-off in the overall markets, three, four percent down yesterday. We could see a little pushback up, but overall, guys, I think it's going to do something like this, right? Take a look at this arrow right here. Take a look at my mouse. You know, we went down 800. I think we could push up here, go back down, push up here, go back down. And, you know, that's just going to open up ins and outs for TQQ, Q, however many Qs that is. I always mess it up. And uh, <laughs> TVIX. So, guys, um, 
I'm always just, uh, in terms of what I'm trading, in terms of these market ETFs, I'm always looking at the market futures. Very, very important. Make sure you're looking at the market futures, pre-market hours to see where, what direction the market is pushing. And that's going to determine what you're going to be trading that day in terms of those market futures. And you know, both possibilities are open, guys. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the markets sell off heavy tomorrow again, but I also wouldn't be surprised if we do push up a little bit tomorrow, which would open up an even better opportunity for TVIX, which is why it's very, very important, like I said, to always keep an eye on the futures. So, you know, TVIX, TQQQ and QQQ and uh, QQQ is also one that goes up when the markets go up are three ETFs market ETFs that I'm going to be heavily watching tomorrow pre-market hours and uh, you know looking to trade overall over the next couple of uh, weeks while the market is in this very volatile stage that it's been in for a long long time so uh, you know Hershey and those three ETFs are the main ones that I'm watching for tomorrow. Uh, you know, Cron is in a very interesting point right now. So let's just take a look at this. This is a marijuana stock, Kronos Group. It had a very big push up this past week. Actually, no, two days ago, actually, because... Altria, which is a big, uh, big tobacco company, they manufacture, they produce Marlboro cigarettes. There was a rumor that came out, unconfirmed news, that they were going to buy out Kronos Group, and this shot the stock up like a like a, a rocket, right? Like a freaking rocket. It went up like crazy, right? So you know, at this point, guys, pre-market hour or aftermarket hours yesterday, we pulled all the way back down to ten dollars which is a previous uh, support level. And, you know, whenever we break out, actually, no, 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 let me rephrase that. We pulled back to $10, which was a previous resistance right around here, $980 to $10. And once a stock breaks out of a resistance, an old resistance, it makes it a new support level. So now that we broke out of that, this is the new support level. So the fact that we're holding above here now could make this an interesting play in my personal opinion. And I was talking about this in the Discord group chat. I believe somebody asked me what I think about Cron, and I said this exact same thing. So the fact that we broke out of the 10 resistance, I want to see it pull back and hold above the 10 resistance, which is the new support now. Hold above it, curl above it, and start to bounce from there before entering that position so that still stands guys the technicals are showing that that could potentially happen and i'm waiting for that again being patient waiting for the opportunity to open up to me because we don't chase opportunities on this channel we let the opportunities come to us and that is how we really just capitalize and become as uh as you know as great of traders as we possibly can be right so that is what I'm doing in terms of Cron, ticker symbol C-R-O-N. Another one I'm watching is JNUG, ticker symbol J-N-U-G. This is a natural, not a natural gas. Oh my God, guys. This is a gold-based ETF. This one is trading based upon slash GC. And pretty much how this works, guys, whenever slash GC, the gold futures are going up in price JNUG is going up in price as well. So we're seeing these futures right now in terms on this of this 184 hour chart, and we're seeing that they are very bullish. So we broke out of this uh resistance at about 1240. Let me just draw this real quick for you guys. So what I want to see now, since we did break above this resistance here at 1240, and we're slowly holding above it in terms of these green candlesticks starting to form and curl back up, is I want to see if we're actually able to maintain this level and start testing these next highs at about 1247. Because again, when the gold futures go up, JNUG is going up in price. So extremely bullish here, guys, in terms of the past month and a half, I would say, you know, check this out. The low at about 1200, right? The next low at about 1218. The next low, it's seeming like it's making the next low here at about 1240. And that pattern is showing us that it's making a higher low, higher high pattern. And this is a very attractive uptrending pattern. So if we are able to hold above this resistance here, 
uh, this old resistance, which has become a new support. You know, I do think the gold futures can continue to push up and uptrend, meaning that JNUG is going to be very attractive. So the fact that JNUG has actually been consolidating around the six to seven dollar range over the past couple of weeks is a very attractive sign in my personal opinion as well. So in terms of shorter term technicals, guys, I do believe JNUG has potential at least 12% excuse me, at least 12% back up to about this, uh, you know, $775, $8 range that it was at about, what, what date was this? Um, 11.20, so about two, three weeks ago, it was at this range. So I do think there is potential for JNUG to get back up there, and I'm going to be watching it very closely. And let me just set an alert for you guys. I'm going to set an alert at about $7 because I want to see a break above that 50 simple moving average here on the 180 day four hour chart. So is at or above $7 perfect? Actually, let's move that up a little bit because that's putting it right at the 50. I want to see it break above the 50 a couple of more cents before paying attention to it. So let's put it at 7.10 and uh, leave it there and just watch it and see what's going to happen with it tomorrow on the 6th of December of 2018. So um, what else do we have here? You know, you guys is one I'm watching, you know, this one's showing a bullish wedge pattern in terms of the uh, natural gas futures. And for those of you guys that don't know, natural gas, whenever it goes up in price, you know, you gas is going up in price as well. And if we take a look at what's going on here, guys, we see a big pullback in terms of natural gas. It's holding above the 50 simple moving average pretty nicely on this 180 day four hour chart. So if it's able to start pushing up, maybe back into the 450s, heading into tomorrow, right? Right. Obviously, the futures markets, the natural gas, uh, I mean, it's obviously still open right now. This is not closed, but, you know, we, this is a great way that we can, uh, you know, plan our trade for tomorrow by just viewing what's going to happen. So if we are able to hold above here and start to push back up and especially break out of this wedge at about 455, 450, that's going to be a very bullish pattern for natural gas, which means that you guys is going to be a solid, solid trade tomorrow, in my personal opinion, from about 150, 160, possibly back up to 170, 175, which is the previous resistance in terms of you guys. So, LABD is another one, guys. This one bounced on the uh, support at about $30. The RSI is pointing up very nicely. We do have a resistance right here at about the 180 simple moving average, but I do believe if the markets do sell off tomorrow and the next day and heading into next week, which again is a big possibility, LABD is going to capitalize on this because for those of you guys that don't know, LABD is uh, a biotechnology ETF and it trades based upon SPS. IBI and this biotechnology ETF where is it guys it's right here let me just drag it on here we're pretty much whenever this is selling off LABD is going up in price so if this is able to break below the 50 simple moving average guys again if the markets sell off I personally think that's possible uh, LABD is going to be a solid one to two to three day swing trade or even a day trade in my personal opinion, and that is why I'm going to be watching it very, very closely. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit longer, but I did want to just go over what I'm personally watching and looking to trade tomorrow on this off day that we do have in the stock market. So I hope you guys enjoyed it again. Feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and join our Discord group as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you all again for all the support, the ongoing support. Peace out.